obtained the apparently scrubbed list of chorus members and cross-referenced those names with the database of registered sex offenders. I'm not going to make you listen to any more of his off-key whining. While the matches could be coincidental, some offenders may just happen to have the same as the members of the choir. The Western Journal unearthed at least four credible matches. David Wallace, Lawrence Earl Friedberg, Louise Kudera, and Keith Pepper. Dave Eugene Wallace was convicted for lewd and lascivious acts with a child under 14 years of age in 1985. There is a David Schwann Wallace listed in the chorus roster. One Twitter user pointed out that one of the singers in the video looked familiar to Wallace's mugshot. In 2001, Feinberg was similarly convicted of lewd or lascivious acts with a child under 14 years of age. Uh, Kudera was convicted of lewd and uh, another one for under 14, a lewd and looks as if it, all of them, all of them. So there's your gay men's choir. Here's some lyrics for you. We'll convert your children, happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly, and you'll barely notice it. We're coming for them, we're coming for your children, we're coming for them, we're coming for your children. Oh, but you were born gay. You were born gay. No, they're coming to make your children gay. Their own words. We'll convert your children. Happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly, and you will barely know. If you can listen to it, you're better than I am. That's that's worse than Beyonce's voice, and that's that's saying a lot. Uh, New York CBS Social, New Jersey woman locked in a seven-year battle with the IRS to prove that she is indeed alive. Now, this is similar to the doltish judge. You can find it, uh, you can search uh, Judge Dunce Cap. Uh, it, it was one of the first Dunce Caps ever mailed out. Uh, the judge in Ohio, oddly enough, again, had neglected to honor someone who was standing in front of him as being alive, even though they had, I think, even the medical proof that they were who they said they were. This is sort of a part two of this, and I'm sure a local judge is much smarter than most of the people who live at the IRS, which should be abolished. So I decided it didn't reach the level of stupidity needed, but we're going to go with it and put it as part of the show because we're winding it down here. Anyone still listening? Let me know. A New Jersey woman has been battling the Internal Revenue Service to prove that she's still alive. And the unfortunate mix-up began with her mother's death. And seven years later, the situation has not been resolved. Seven years? Hey, the IRS is great. I wonder how much they're going to give her in compensation equal to how much they would want from the average person if it took them seven years to uh, rectify a problem. It caused her a tax nightmare for the woman and her father. A summer camp counselor, the 25-year-old Samantha Dressig, is in full of energy and has an important outlook. Life is short. You never know when it's going to end. But according to the IRS, hers ended seven years ago. The last actual person I had spoken to from the IRS, and I quote, Wow, you're dead all over the system, Dressig said. That would be really good luck for a lot of people. The morbid mix-up began when she tried to file her taxes in 2014, the same year that her mom passed away of ovarian cancer. She thinks the government screwed up their last names. But she's not able to get uh, taxpayer assistance because of it. So for most people, it would be a blessing. But uh, for her, you know, quite the opposite. And of course, oh, we got to ring the bell. Wait, I, what do I hear? You know why we ring the bell. We ring the bell when Sam is right. And that is exactly the case here. What did I say? I said that you could not have anybody watching Playboy, buying Playboy, and just for any articles, and that they were never going to make it that way. And that's exactly what happened. Now, these people who are trying to redefine beauty, I'm sorry, I'm fat. You know what? Fat's not attractive. I'm sorry. I know some people feel differently. You know what? I need to lose weight. I'm fat. If I want to be attractive, I shouldn't be fat. I'm glad I'm not fatter because I would be more unattractive. Am I unattractive? I guess I must be. Um, that's not even what's the issue, though. The issue here is the Victoria's Secret models. 
some of the most physically beautiful women in the world. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with some people being the best football player, some people being the prettiest model, some people being the very best news commentator, political analyst, somebody else the prettiest body? What's wrong with that? said Victoria's Secret would never make it with what they were doing, trying to push the woke agenda. How about a man as a woman? Wouldn't you like to see that? Victoria's Secret says it will bring back its runway show. Take a look at how the fashion event has changed over the years. I'm not going to read it because I don't care. The bell has been rung. I'm right. Nobody wants to see a woke person's agenda on a runway. Next, uh, only, uh, only three to go. Only three to go. The UK City Council suggests a local cake might be racist because it contains sugar. This is by Paul Joseph Watson, InfoWars. All right, Paul Joseph Watson. Um, the re this... This came within a pubic hair of winning the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, and I'll tell you why. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you'll get the idea. I do have to read the beginning of it. Leeds City Council is concerned about the origins of local produce such as parking cake because it may have once included sugar imported from the Caribbean and therefore is racist. Yes, really. Okay, look. It's also hard to send a dunce cap to England, but you can help me do it by donating at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. The trouble here is if Leeds City Council gets what they want, let's figure this out. So here we have the poor and supposedly sad, oppressed people of the Caribbean. Now, I was in the Caribbean, and massive amounts of money get spent there every day, even in the local communities, in taxis and shuttles, or whatever, okay. These poor oppressed people who live in the tourist, one of the tourist hubs of the world. If you quit eating parking cake, I don't even know what the hell that is. If you quit eating parking cake because it once included sugar imported from the Caribbean, what do you think is going to happen to the sugar market in the Caribbean? What do you think is going to happen to the largely black people who make their Decent living, making that sugar, raising that sugar. What's going to happen if, oh, well, we need to quit eating this parking cake? Because as it says here, historically, some of the ingredients used to make these local products were gained through the triangular slave trade, like sugar. Who gives a rat's ass? If you shut the, if you, if you quit buying the sugar now, you are going to do more harm to the black people currently living there than the slave trade did to them back then. At least back then, they would have had some means of existing, although, it, granted, it would be a terrible one. But by trying to shame people who had nothing to do with that into not eating the cake, you are going to destroy the lives of the black sugar cane farmers who live there now. Dumbasses! Uh, two to go, before, oh, well, one, one to go, then the winner. Two to go. Um, viral video of racist soap dispenser reveals a much bigger problem in tech. The racist soap dispenser. Now, they're saying that the censors don't pick up black skin. It's racist. It's racist. It's racist. Okay, let's, uh, like we did the sugarcane story, let, let's follow this to its logical conclusion, shall we? The same people that are saying that the soap dispensers are racist are, in fact, the same people who commonly say things like the greedy corporations want to take every penny they can get. So, 
the greedy corporations that make the hand sanitizer are exploiting people, but they don't want black people's money because the hand sanitizer doesn't work on black people. Well, how are they going to make money then as a greedy corporation? They're going to make less money if an entire group of people can't use the soap dispenser. So it stands to reason that their entire argument doesn't make any sense. No company would ever do that. And it would be impossible to cause a machine to do that. At least with the technology that we have now. What can a viral video of a racist soap dispenser tell you about the role of technology? A surprising amount. Chaka Wumika Afi Gabo. A Nigerian man who works in tech tweeted a short video of a racist soap dispenser that appears to dish soap out to a white person's hand, but not a black person. Let's see, the racist soap dispenser. Nice. Okay, Noel, you try it. What's your honor? Too black or too black? Yeah. But as Chugger Wumba points out, this highlights a bigger issue. The no-touch soap dispenser most likely uses some kind of light sensor to detect when a hand is underneath the contraption. Apparently, a dark-skinned hand wasn't light enough to register. Oh. So, a technical glitch is actually at fault. But then all the rest of it, they talk about apes, they talk about gorillas. Look at this entire article. This bonehead wrote, Tom Hale. All this BS they wrote, a race and the race and the racism and the racism and the soap and the racism and the racism followed by the racism. It's a technical error. There is no racism at play. And that, friends, you know exactly what it does. That brings us to the winner of the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. We even have our music. It's going to play. I'm sure it is. Do me a favor. Make sure you donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. It helps me afford to mail out Dunce Caps. All right, guys. The winner. What could be dumber than a racist soap dispenser? Supposed rape dis uh, soap dispenser. Lena Bloom is Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue's first transgender cover star. Dum, dum, die. Remember what I said? I was ringing the bell. Remember about the... the, the uh, God, I miss Krista. What we could do with this this whole article right now would be the funniest thing ever. Um, Didn't I ring the bell just a little bit ago and I said I was right? This is going to be the worst decision, possibly in media history for the last 25 years, if not longer. If not longer. Maybe ever. This surpasses the, the lunacy of, of what Playboy did. This is passing off a man who I think cut his schmeckle off, so he's a mutilated man. Pretending to be a woman on the cover of a magazine, which the only reason it's still in print is largely because of this issue, where men want to see women. Real woman. That's not a real woman. I'm sorry. Hate me if you want to. That is not a real woman. There is nothing that I could do as a man that will ever change what science says. My chromosomes say that I am male. And if I cut my schmeckle off, I am now a mutilated man. But I'm a man. If I doll myself up to look like that, I'm a dolled up man. There is no other way. Just follow the science. I follow the science. <laughs> Oh my God! And I, and I love what this says. And I, I put it on the hat. Um, so I, I, I'm gonna hold off. I'll wait. Uh, <coughs> this is horrible. As the first openly transgender woman, and it's not a transgender woman. It's a guy in a bikini. 
as the first guy in a bikini to ever be on the cover of the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, Lena Bloom can safely say his, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it, modeling career is well in bloom. Full bloom. Or what have I done? Now I've closed my article. Oh, I completely closed the article, so now I have to go back to this. Hold on one second. To my history, to my reading, because this is so horrible you have to read it, that's all. Well, you don't, you don't have to read it because you have to look at the picture. You have to suffer through me reading it to you. Um, here to celebrate is what they're saying. Horrible. So disgusting. Ugh. But the seeds of the history-making moment were planted in 1997 when she, he flipped through a Tyra Bank-fronted edition of the Bikini Bible on her father's coffee table. They told me... I got the cover, I spoke to my dad. I was like, when I was looking at the magazine, I was looking into my future. You were giving me the tools I need to see myself. Yeah, he was giving his son a magazine, hoping he was a normal boy. But you can't say that anymore. And again, do I think that this person needs to be ridiculed, laughed at? No. But don't try to sell this as a woman. The cover in this moment represent what it looks like in the future. Well, then our future is repulsive. How about that? Just, ugh. Ugh, good lord. All right, so I'm not even going to read this drivel. It goes on forever and ever and ever. I'm sorry. Have a, have a healthy dose of yuck. That is repugnant. First of all, he needs to lose a few pounds. Um, ugh. All right, so here here is what they are being sent. This is the, the, the this is being sent to Sports Illustrated. Now I'm very proud of this because if you look at the uh, oh no I'm too big. If you look at the way I did the L, or the L I should say. L as well. Illustrated. Move it. You will get to see it at some point. Photoshop is being an ass pain. All right. It says, illustrated. While each person, I wrote, should be free to live as they wish, free from harm, do not understand that such nonsense makes your readership ill just to look at it. You, at SI, win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Most men just puked in their mouth. Good job. And this is what I'm sending them. They're going to get that printed out. And they're going to get the hat. Here's the hat. Here's what it says. First of all, of course, it always says dunce. Why? Because it's a dunce cap. I thought of that myself. Science. No science. Here are my big burly dude. Look at my burly dude in his bikini and his like little tutu dress and his girly heel shoes. And I wrote, I don't find it odd. Here, this is, my, this is my favorite quote. This this guy right here with the, the SI shirt. This is my favorite one. You'll see why in a minute. We at Sports Illustrated believe that men can do anything better than a woman. That includes being a woman. Take that, ladies. Bam, that's exactly what they did. How many of the real women didn't get a shot at this so that this bonehead statement could be made? Which is what I address here. Here's my. Bikini model. It says second place under her. And she said, nothing empowers women like giving a woman's award to a man? Question mark. Now that is going to be sent to Sports Illustrated along with this award printed out. And if you'd like to help me do so, you can do that at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. All the money you give to me, I use it to mail dunce caps and various things. Good night, friends. God bless.